Well, good evening. I hope you've had a great day today. I hope you've been encouraged and uplifted today. Uh, I'm going to look this evening at Titus chapter 3, and this is part of our New Testament in 90 reading plan. I hope you're continuing with that. We don't have much more to go a couple of weeks after this week, so really, uh, really three weeks left. So I hope that you are continuing with that. Uh, if you haven't started that, uh, go back and, and look through uh, the the series or the reading plan. If you need that reading plan, I want to encourage you to contact us at the church office. We'll be glad to give that to you. I want to encourage you to do the reading plan. If you haven't started it or if you're, if you're lagging behind, make sure and keep up. It's important that we read God's Word and that we spend time in the Word of God each and every day. And so uh, we're doing this New Testament in 90 reading plan, and tonight we're going to be looking at Titus chapter 3. And Paul's writing to Titus as he is encouraging young Titus to continue in the ministry, but he's uh, exhorting him and, and helping him to see some important teachings that he expects Titus to pass along to the people to whom he ministers. And so what I want us to look at in chapter 3 is the first 11 verses. And I want us to think about the reality that, that Paul here is discussing the need for continuing in good works. Now, last year and really uh, into this year already, we're, we've been talking a lot about being the good or be the good has been our catchphrase or our theme or focus, if you want to use that word. And, and be the good essentially is uh, the idea of recognizing the kind of life that God has called us to live. And part of being the good is doing good and essentially doing good works. And so Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, he would let us know that we need to let our light shine before others and presumably what Jesus is talking about there with regard to letting our light shine is actually engaging in good works because Jesus says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds or your good works and give glory to your Father who's in heaven. Well, we know that Paul tells us in Ephesians that we, were God's, we are God's workmanship or his handiwork or his works of art. And we were created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance or beforehand that we should walk in them. God has prepared these good works for us to do, and God expects us to engage in those good works. And so when we think about being the good, part of being the good is engaging in good deeds or good works. And Paul, in Titus chapter 3, is talking about just that very thing. But he frames it in the context of our conduct among other people. But essentially what he's saying is that we need to make sure that we are ready for every good work. We're going to come back to that in just a moment, but thinking about being ready for every good work, that means I have to have the right kind of attitude about life. I have to have the right kind of attitude about the people around me. And I have to have the right kind of attitude with regard to my responsibility as a follower of Jesus. And so I want to read these 11 verses from Titus chapter 3 and follow along. And then I'll have a little bit to say about this section of Paul's writing. He says this, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now verse 8. 
the saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people, but avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. As for a person who stirs up division, after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful. He is self-condemned. Now, this section is Paul, again, urging Titus to recognize some things that Paul wants him to pass along. Certainly, these were likely things that Titus had heard before from Paul, but as Paul is writing to him, he's urging him to remember these things and to remember to remind those to whom Titus is ministering. Now, a couple of things that we see early on. The first two verses in this section, Paul deals with proper conduct and, and what, it, uh, what kind of character or conduct a follower of Jesus must have. And so he says you need to have the right kind of conduct toward those that are in authority, toward the rulers and, and those in authority. And so he says be subject to them and obey them. Certainly, this is familiar to us. Uh, you know, as, as Peter writes, he says something very similar. As Peter, in, in chapter 2 of his first letter, talks about being subject to human institutions. Uh, and so making sure we are subject to them, that we obey them. And certainly, we, we obey uh, so far as it aligns with the Word of God. We should never obey just simply for the sake of obeying. Uh, because there are some things that are uh, put in place that are uh, contrary to the Word of God. And in those instances, our first responsibility is to the Word of God, to His will. And we must not obey uh, when it leads to sinful actions. And so we, we have to make sure, though, that, that what Paul is talking to Titus about is simply the character or conduct of those that follow Jesus. And so be subject to those that are in authority, those rulers, and obey them. Uh, and he says, be ready for every good work. And this is our conduct again. We should be ready and willing to serve in any way that we can. Be ready for every good work, he said. I want to come back to that in a few moments again and talk a little bit more about that particular phrase, be ready for every good work. But what we see him go on to say then is our conduct uh, should be appropriate toward everyone. And so he talks about the fact that we don't need to speak evil of anyone. And not only that, we need to be peaceable. We need to be gentle. We need to make sure that we show humility to all people and that we are not prideful in our spirit or our attitude, but rather we humble ourselves. Uh, and, and we recognize who we are in light of who God is. And as we, as we seek to follow Jesus, we recognize that we fall well short of his footsteps. But we still must strive to follow in his steps. But the realization that we are sinners uh, ought to humble us to the point that our attitude and our conduct among everyone must be very clear that we are humble. In our actions, in our words, we humble ourselves. Certainly Jesus serves as that great example of humility, and Paul speaks of that in Philippians chapter 2 when he talks about Jesus taking on flesh, becoming a servant, humbling himself, not considering being equal with God something to grasp, but he lets it go. He empties himself. The word is kenosis. It means an emptying. He emptied himself of all of that. And he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death on a cross. And so Jesus serves as that great example of, uh, of proper conduct as we seek to do the will of God. Verse 3 and following all the way down through verse 11, Paul here is addressing the importance of maintaining that good conduct. And he starts out at verse 3 by talking about how we are to maintain that good conduct in view of our, our past conduct. And so think again about what he says there in verse 3. He says, listen, we were once all of these things. He says, foolish, disobedient, led astray. 
We were slaves to various passions and pleasures. We passed our days in malice and envy. We were hated by others, and we hated one another. He said, that's who you used to be. And so we need to have proper conduct in view of our past, recognizing that indeed we are sinful creatures. We are sinners, uh, and we need to have that in view. And so our conduct is uh, reflective of the way that we were. When we, when we have a, the proper conduct, we are conscious of our former life. But now, in verse 4, he says, The goodness and the loving kindness of God, when it came, God saved us. And so, not only in view of our past conduct, but in view of our salvation that God has brought. So we were once slaves to sin. We were once dead in our trespasses, as Paul says in Ephesians. Uh, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. But God made us alive. And so here he says, you know, when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, when, when all of this came, and, and he's talking there about Jesus, when God's salvation that he's offering through Jesus appeared to us, God saved us, and he saved us through his son Jesus. It's not by anything that we have done. It's not, it's not by our righteousness. It's not by the good works that we engage in. And so we're not earning our salvation. We're not, Paul's not talking about doing good works or being the good in the works that we do uh, in order to earn salvation. Paul is saying you need to have the right kind of conduct which leads you to be ready for every good work, to remember to engage in those good works, but that conduct with respect or in view of who we were and now the salvation that God has brought. So our past conduct is in view. Our salvation now is in view. And then what Paul talks about is the fact that we need to have in view uh, these things that, are, uh, things that are not worthy, things that are uh, not helpful or beneficial. We need to make sure that we're recognizing those things that are harmful uh, and, and not profitable in what we are doing. And so as he moves through this section, he offers the good and the profitable things. And that is the statement where he says those good works. Make sure that you devote yourself to good works. Those things are good and profitable. But there are some things, he says, that are not good and profitable. As a matter of fact, they are unprofitable and they are worthless, or you may have in your version that you're reading, useless. And listen to what he says those things are. He says, foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, quarrels about the law. All of these things are unprofitable and worthless or useless. They're not good for anything. So avoid these things, he says. Again, in terms of those things that are good, he places that in the context of the good works that we must be ready always to engage in. And so I want to come back to that very thought. As he concludes this section, he talks about the person who stirs up the controversies, who, uh, who stirs up dissension or division uh, or strife or conflict. The one who stirs all of this up, he says he is sinful. He is warped in his thinking. And not only that, he is self-condemned. He is condemning himself by his actions, by his conduct. That's what Paul is saying. But you come back to the beginning section when Paul talks about being ready for every good work. I appreciate Bill McDonald more than I can express in words. His life has been spent in service to the kingdom of God. He has gone so many places uh, and I would suspect that it might be hard for him to name every place that he's been and everywhere he has proclaimed the gospel of Jesus. He won't admit this, but I will admit it for him. Bill McDonough is one of the most well-known and well-respected missionaries in all of the world in the churches of Christ. And his expertise and his experience are highly sought after. And we here at Winsong are extremely lucky to have Bill McDonald and Marie Claire as part of our church family. And I hope that you will join me in continuing to pray for them and the work and the ministry that they are involved in all across the world uh, and continue to pray for open doors. This morning, we were uh, 
pleased to have Bill present a message to us from the Word of God. And what a powerful and challenging message that was, open doors. As he shared with us the words of Paul from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, where Paul talks about uh, this door was wide open for him and for the effective advancement uh, of or service of uh, the kingdom. Bill challenged us to think about and to reflect on the open doors that are all around us. I want us to take that thought into what uh, Paul has to say to Titus here. Again, at the beginning of chapter 3, he says, Be submissive to rulers and authorities, be obedient, and then he says there in verse 1, Be ready for every good work. Now, there are so many opportunities to serve. There are so many opportunities to engage in the work of the church here. Certainly, many people support uh, the mission works around the world, and I think that is extremely important, and I would not urge anyone to quit that, but rather I would challenge us all to see those opportunities that we can help. But what about you? What about you right here at Winsong? There are all kinds of ways that you can be involved in the ministry here at Winsong, and I want to challenge you to open your eyes to the things that are going on here in this congregation and in this community and challenge yourself to make every effort to engage in the work of this congregation. I want to challenge you to take every opportunity that comes your way and be ready for every good work. Remember that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance that we should walk in them. God has given us these opportunities to serve, and doors are wide open for us. And I want to challenge each one of you to look deeply within yourself and reflect on ways that you can engage in the ministry and the work of this congregation if you have a question about any of the ministries that are going on here at Winsong, please find an elder, find me uh, or one of the deacons and ask. Uh, certainly, we want you to be involved. That's one thing that I love about what our elders do here at Winsong. They challenge every member to be involved in the work. I want you to think about what Paul says. Be ready for every good work. And remember that we were created for good works. And so let's heed that challenge that Jesus puts forward in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. And let our light shine so that others can see your good works and give glory to your Father who's in heaven. Let's be ready for every good work.